Hello Academy and Animation. This is your weight painting tutorial for attaching your skeleton to your character and getting it to work right. So um, like I said, this is the most complicated uh, part of our class and so I'm just going to try and go through this methodically and remind you of what we did before. So just as a reminder as to what happened yesterday was we, we learned how to distribute this weight or the pull on these vertexes from these joints by doing what's called weight painting. And the way you get there is you go on your skin and you go skin, edit smooth skin, paint weights tool, option box. Now, we use the rainbow color map, which is right here, but you could also just use a grayscale. But I like using the rainbow color map. And let's remember that orange is around 75%, yellow here is around 50%. Uh, Green here is around 25%, and um, blue is closer to like 10 or almost nothing. So if I go to a different joint, like joint 4, it's going to be the inverse. Instead of orange, yellow, green, it's going to be green, yellow, orange, right? And that's the way that works because they're sharing that weight. These vertices right here are sharing that weight. So if I go to joint 3, you don't see that at all. You see only 100% influence on these. Now, remember to change a weight, you always want to go from a dark color to a lighter color. So never go white to black. Always go from black to white or somewhere along this shader here. So if I wanted to assign 50% uh, weight to these vertices here, I would go to the value button right here and hit 0.5. That's for 50%. And then with my weight tool, I would just paint on the vertexes right there and that would assign this weight as a 50 percent so that's how you redistribute weight along the vertexes all right so that was all review we should have covered that already um, that should be done so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these skills that we learned and apply it to a skeleton so without further ado here is the skeleton that we're using i'm going to be using a link uh, and once again link's joints are too big so I'm going to go to display, animation, joint size, and I'm going to shrink that down. Something like that. All right. I'm just going to need the perspective view. I don't need the four view. And right now the skeleton is not attached. So the first thing we want to do is we want to attach the skeleton to the um, skin here. Now when I say skin, I mean the geometry mesh. So what, what we want to do is we want to attach the skin. So select the skin. Hold the shift key, select the root joint, and then we're going to go up here to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, and be sure to hit the proper option, hit the option box, and pay close attention to these options that I'm changing. These options are also on the share drive. So if I go to MAI3, I3 classes, and Academy Pickup, under Academy Pickup, there are smooth bind options. These are the options you need to follow. So if you are confused, they're right here under the Academy Pickup Drive. Now also, there is a PDF that has all these instructions that I'm going through right now also on the Academy Pickup Drive. So you really have no excuse. You have a PDF that's all written out for you right here under the Academy Pickup, or you have this video. So here are the options that you need. You're going to switch this to Joint Hierarchy. Bind method closest distance. You're going to skin classic linear. We're going to leave normalize weights as post right now, but we're going to change that to interactive when we get to our paint weight tool. So don't forget to change post later. Now these top four aren't as important as these bottom, right? So the next thing you want to do is make sure you hit allow multiple bind poses. So you make sure you check that on. Allow multiple bind poses. Then you're going to scroll this down to one so you have a max influence of one and then you uncheck maintain max influences. Everything else you can leave the same. So once again, the big three to remember are check on, allow multiple bind poses, check max influences and reduce it down to one, and hit maintain max influences and leave it unchecked. And remember, we're gonna change post to interactive in a little bit. For right now, we'll just leave it as post. So go ahead and hit bind skin. If it says result and it just shows the uh, skeleton and it deselects the face, you're in good shape. Now. Also, if you click off of it, it'll become a rainbow skeleton, as you see right here. Now, as you rotate, don't panic. We have to fix stuff. So here's our first problem. 
Number one, we need to parent our eyes to our head joint. And number two, you'll notice the chin is not moving with this joint, and we want the chin to move with that joint, okay? So let's first take care of our eyes. So parenting the eyes deals with grabbing this eyeball, holding the shift key, selecting the head joint, and pressing P. I'm going to do that again with the other eye in case you missed it. I'm going to grab this eyeball, shift select the head joint, and press P. Now the eyeballs are going to move with the head, and all I've done is just parent them. So the eyeballs are parented to this head joint. Notice I selected the head joint last, not the eyeballs. All right, let's talk about this chin problem now, okay? If you go through and play with the other joints, you'll notice some work really well. That one works reasonably well for starting off. Others, uh, that one actually looks okay. Others don't work so well at all. Like if I go to the ankle, right? Um, if I pull this down and up, notice the heel is not moving with the ankle, and the heel should move with the ankle. So we have to fix that as well. All right. So going back to these problems, what we have to do is we have to go to weight paint mode. We have to go into the weight painting mode, and um, we do this by going to skin, edit smooth skin, and paint skin weights tool. And we go to the option box. Now the first thing I want you to do before you do anything else is where it says normalize weights. I want you to change that from post to interactive. And it'll prompt you and say, hey, do you mean to do that? And you say, yes, I meant to do that. Now, um, if it doesn't look like you can paint anything, remember you do have to click on a joint here to see what's happening. So if I click on root, that is the weight assigned to the main root joint. And it goes through the hierarchy, hip, knee, ankle. Now before we get started, I just want to remind you of some simple rules to deal with uh, weight painting. And I'll leave this on the share drive as well. It's not there right now, but I'll put that on there for you. Um, rules for weight painting. The weight values are only assigned to the vertexes, right? Or the vertices, if you will. So that's anywhere you see a line intersecting another line, that's where you can assign a weight. You can't assign a weight to a face. All right. Rule number two. You can never go down in value. You can, you have the ability to do that, but you never should because it'll randomly assign the leftover values to random places. So always replace with a larger value than the current value. So always go from 25 to 50, never go from 50 to 25. Next, when you do this, you should start from the outer or the child joints and work your way back to the root. And then also later, you're gonna try using gradients like starting with one of these vertices over here at 0%, the next one at 25, the next one at 50, and so on. This will give yourself that smooth bind effect that you did with the rod. But you're going to do that last. This, is, this gradient thing you play with is at the end. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you assign everyone with the correct value. Let's see. Also, remember that we can mirror the weights. And I'm going to even put that in bold and highlight that. We can mirror the weights, so only work on the character's left side. That's our screen right side but only work on the character's left. All right, start assigning the misplaced weights first and then go back and make the gradient. So what you should do, what this rule means is, and this is what we're gonna get started with, we're gonna go through the model and we're going to make sure everything is correctly white and correctly black for each joint on the left-hand side and down the middle, okay? And then the last rule I want you to pay attention to is you're definitely going to have to experiment. You are going to get stuff wrong. You are going to have to try it several times. Command Z is your best friend. So, all right. So if you follow all these rules, or if you want to call them policies or something like that, that's fine. If you follow all these, you should be in good shape and have a decent start to your weight painting. You might need to go back and do some subtle gradients, um, but we're going to do that at the end. It's probably not even going to get included in this lesson. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start assigning the misplaced weights. And we're gonna do this from the outer joints first, right? Or the child joints first, and then work our way back to the root. So let's go look at Link again. And Link right here. Um, if we notice, I'm gonna click off of him for a second. And again, we're gonna look at the head. And as I move the head, you notice the chin stays with the head, right? Now I did say start with the outer joints first, so I'm gonna rotate this. And this guy looks fine. Right? What's moving is supposed to be moving. What isn't is staying still. 
Now, if I go to the next joint, what's moving with this joint is moving, life's good with that joint. This guy, you see how some of the hat is not moving with some of the joint here? That's a problem. So that is probably the first joint we're gonna start with, but we'll take a look at all of them. Let me just reset these back to zero real quick and we'll be all good. So just take that, go back to zero. This one, go back to zero. And this one, go back to zero. We're all set. So click on the skin. You're gonna go back to skin. By, uh, edit smooth skin, paint skin weights tools, option box. Replay that, skin. Edit Smooth Skin, Paint Skin Weights Tools, Option Box. Now with that Option Box, you're going to go through everything up here. So I'm going to start at the top, the outermost thing. So notice these are all the joints I have, and we're going to have to actually look and click on every one of those joints I just scanned through. So there's the tip of the hat. The tip, every tip of the, every joint should have zero weight attached to it. And this one has no weight attached. Life is good on that one. So I'm gonna to go to the hat top, and the hat top has everything along these verts attached to it, so I don't need to make any changes there. So then I'm gonna to go to hat outer, and the hat outer has a few extra here. So what I don't wanna do is I wanna take these weights and I wanna apply them to this joint. I'll make a gradient of this later, but for right now, I'm just gonna take all these and make them 100%. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make sure I switch this to interactive, which I did. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna take my value here and I'm gonna switch it to one. So it's at 100%. And I'm gonna go over here. Now my brush is gigantic. So to change your brush size, you click on, or excuse me, you press B on your keyboard, just plain B, and that allows you to left click and you can increase or decrease your brush size. Now I'm gonna paint this all white along this row of verts. So I'm just gonna go through and paint that white. Paint it white. So it's going from black to white. So I'm allowed to do that because I'm increasing the value. And I still have my color ramp on and that's actually a good thing. Oh, and see I accidentally clicked there, undo's your best friend. Now also another good idea that will help you is if you are doing this in one mode or rigid mode rather than smooth mode. So I'm just double checking to make sure I have everything set there and that one looks good. I'm gonna move up to my next joint here. So this guy has started getting a lot more and there's a few things left here. So I'm just gonna assign all the weights on this row here and give him all of these vertices right here. Now, later I'm gonna mess with who gets what and maybe assign more to the, to the next joint from this joint. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave that there and let and we'll mess with a gradient later. Okay, the hat base has a decent amount. And then let's go to the head. Now here's the main problem we were talking about before. Remember how the chin, the chin is not moving when I rotate his joint here. His chin is staying behind while I'm trying to get his head to, to roll around. Okay, so that's the problem. And that's because there's no weight assigned to this chin. This chin weight got assigned to Probably the neck. No, it got assigned to his chest down here. So what I want to do is, these are all black, so all I got to do is go from black to white. So again, the value is at one. I'm just going to assign this weight to be 100% all around the chin. So there's 100%, there's 100%, there's 100%, there's 100%, there's 100%. And now his entire face is all lit up, and that's great. Like I said before, we're gonna go back and work on gradients, but right now everything is a bright white that is working for us. Now I'm gonna to go to his neck, and his neck looks reasonably well. His neck could move these. So I'm gonna grab this one and assign that to his neck, assign that to his neck, so that his neck completely lights up when I bend his neck. Do you know what? I'll grab that one too, why not? I'll just grab his whole neck, so his whole neck, oops. There you go, make sure you click it on it and it turns white instead of red. Red's close to 100, but red's not 100. And so I'm grabbing everything around there. That's good. So everything on the neck is assigned to this joint right there. And that's great. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go back to my weight paint. Once again, that skin, 
Edit Smooth Skin, Paint Skin Weights Tools Options, right? And I'm going to show you how to do it with the feet. Now, I'm going to expect you to do it on your own with the hand, but the, the hat's been done, and you're just going to run, it, run into a few more problems with the feet. And so just to remind you, it's a good idea to check out the joints before you get going. So the hip is reasonably okay. Um, it's pulling on the waist. It's pulling a little bit too much of one part of the kilt and not a much of, of the other. But the hip isn't bad. Some of you put the hip up really high and it's moving some of the body. You don't want the body to move the hip. You want the body to move with the body. So just make sure when you move this around, nothing from his torso is moving. And he's actually not doing that. Some of you might be experiencing that and that's a reassignment of the weights. Now if I go to the knee here, the knee is not moving well at all. Part of his boot is sticking with the, the hip bone, and some of the, the boot is moving with the knee bone. I'm going to have to reassign those weights. Now, a big, big problem is the heel isn't moving with the ankle, right? And that's not realistic at all. That heel is staying put as I bend with the ankle, and we need to fix that. And then lastly, the toe here, the toe is moving up actually quite nicely. I'm not going to need to do much with the ball, the foot, or the toe. So, once again, click on the skin, go to skin, edit smooth skin, Paint skin weights and options. So I'm going to scroll through here, find my left foot, which is right here, the toe, nice and clean. The ball, the ball has pretty much the very tippy tippy top of the toe assigned to it. I'm going to give the ball a little bit more weight. So once again, I'm double checking. I have value of one there. I'm on my skin weights there, and I'm going to paint everything at the top right here. So everything up here, it's a value of one. Very good. Boom. All right, so everything there has a value of one. Now, I am going to make a grading of this later, but that's for the next assignment. That'll be for Friday. All right, um, now let's go to the ankle. The ankle needs some work. So the ankle at the front of the foot looks great, but notice the back of the heel is empty. It's black. So what I need to do is I need to make this white. So again, value of one. I'm just going to paint on all the vertexes on the back of the heel, and I'm going to give the ankle these vertexes here. Make sure all that's there, and life is now good for the ankle. Next, I'm going to go to the knee, and the knee I'm going to give the top of the boot, and I'm not going to do it right now in this demo, but I am eventually going to need to establish a gradient of... Um, between the leg and the boot and the knee. But for right now, I'm grabbing everything, oops, on this. Actually, I do want to grab that one. I'm grabbing everything that is horizontal or flat on the boot, I'm giving to the knee. Now, it's still not going to look perfect when I start bending it around, but it's sure going to look better. And that's what we're going for right now. We'll get to more detail in the next lesson, but for right now, I'm just painting these on. Oop, that was too far. So remember, I don't want to get I don't want to get that one. I want to get everything else like that. All right. Bam. Nope. Get it. So once again, ugh. so I'm going to change my brush size. If you're clicking on stuff and you're selecting too many things, you might need a smaller brush. So once again, you change your brush size by hitting B. That lets you paint everything that needs to be painted. And that is looking good. Now, as it goes to the hip, the hip um, you can leave this, the middle seam is going to get stuck with the root, but the hip, you actually want this kilt part to move with the hip. So we're going to click on this, we're going to paint through the hip. But I want to make sure, some of you will have the body like that. This is all with the hip, you don't want that. Okay? And if you do have part of your body moving with your hip, you need to fix that by, and I'm not going to undo it, I'm actually going to fix it for you. So, but first, I'm going to keep painting all this to the hip while I'm here. And the next step is, there we go, almost there, there we go. Yes. Oh, missed a spot. So, keep checking. You're going to want to check underneath the kilt as well. I know, this might cause a few snickers. And you're all set on the hip. Oop, just missed the back. 
Don't neglect the back. Don't neglect his belt. Get all this moving with his hip. Actually, you don't want the belt. Sorry. Everything on the under underside of the belt you don't want. Now, what if you do have an assignment like this? Well, then you have to go back to the root or his chest. I could assign it to his waist. And I could paint all this to his waist. And that way, remember, you can't subtract. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I cannot set a value of zero. You cannot set a value of zero and subtract from here. What will happen is complete disaster. It will reassign the weights elsewhere, and you won't, it won't work right. So it's just, it's just a big no-no. Always go from zero to one. Never go from one to zero. Okay? Um, so once again, I'm just going to go back to, I can assign it to the root or the waist. I'm just going to do it to the waist just to get out of the way. And I'm just assigning one. And so if I notice it's, it's black here and it's white here. But now if I go back to the waist and paint it, so I'm going to give the waist all of the belt for right now. That's this stuff right here. I'm going to give the waist all of that. All of that, all of that, all, oop. so that, again, again, that's why you want to use rigid, is because sometimes you can't click on the right vertex. When you go to rigid mode, it lets you click on the right vertex. All right, that looks pretty even for this left leg. I'm not caring about the other side because I'm going to mirror it eventually. I can go to hip here, and it looks like... It's pretty even. There you go. Just a, one more here, one more here, and that's it. All right. So now when I move the hip and rotate the hip, it all moves squarely. Now, don't worry about that poke through. Um, we're going to fix that with a gradient later. So this is just the first step in getting it all ready to make gradients. All right. So in review, if I want to go to skin, edit smooth skin, paint skin weights, options, so I want to look at my leg. My leg should look like hip should kind of cover the under kilt and all of the leg. The knee should cover from the top of the boot down to about mid calf. The ankle should cover this first set of vertices, the heel and everything. And the ball of the foot should kind of cover up here. Nothing should be on the toe. Nothing should be on these outer extremities. So now what I want you to do is I want you to try the hand. So you're going to have to go scroll through this list here. And I want you to find the hand tip, right? So you're going to have to do it all with each finger. You're going to have to reassign all these weights. And then you're going to have to go to the hand, and then you're going to have to go to the wrist, forearm, elbow, shoulder, and clavicle. So I want you to do the exact process we did with the, the leg, and I want you to do it with the arm. Uh, thank you for watching. Do your best. Do remember to experiment, and just make sure you get the clean weights. If you have time, then begin to make gradients like you did with the rod that will give you these smooth bends that look like this. But that will be for another lesson. Thanks for watching. Do as best you can. Good luck.